the early reviews for Intel Arc graphics are not looking good. You know, we talked about this yeah. way back at the height of the GPU shortage. We were like, man, Intel's got to ship these GPUs now because even though we know they've been delayed and we know that they might not be on par with the best from AMD and NVIDIA right out of the gate, you know, first generation woes, right? If they manage to ship something today, it's an automatic W because the pricing for everything else is so utterly ridiculous that they couldn't possibly look like idiots. And yet their timing was like hilariously bad. Yeah. Because the market just tanked, which is great to be very clear. Yeah, great for gamers. Not great for Intel necessarily. Um, Overall but, performance yeah. for the entry level Alchemist GPU looks like the GTX 1650 Super or Radeon RX 6400 in most real world tests. And it's often beaten out by its competitors. Now, strangely, it seems to perform much better in synthetic benchmarks, but unless your name is, oh, I don't know, Kingpin, you probably don't care that much about synthetic benchmarks and yeah. you want to play actual real games. In what appears to be Intel's reviewer's guide, the only times that this was not the case in Intel's own internal testing were... Nakara Blade Point, where it beat the 1650 Super by 2 FPS and the RX 6400 by 6 FPS. And Nizahan, where it got 200 FPS across the board. I have never heard of either of those games. You guys will have to forgive me for being such an ignorant, ignorant gamer. Okay, so I'm, I'm just looking into this. It, Nakara or Naraka? Oh, Naraka. Sorry, excuse me. Naraka, Naraka Blade Point. looks like a very highly rated game. It looks quite... No, it's not that new. I see a Naraka Blade Point Xbox launch trailer from one day ago. Um, but then it also says initial release date, August 11th, 2021. So I have no idea. But I think uh, this is a NetEase game. So I wouldn't be too surprised if this is more popular in the market that they're launching the GPU in. Mm -hmm. And I assume that might be the same with Nizan as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so that might be what's going on. I am kind of wondering if it's performing well in synthetics, but not in games. I wonder if it does well in like research applications and stuff. I mean, I can't Maybe say there's... anything that I know. Gotcha. All I can say is whatever's here. Yeah. So my drivers attested against the GTX 1050 Ti with their aggregate results looking like uh, the 1050 Ti being about 77% of the A380's performance. That's kind of a yikes. <laughs> uh, the 1650 D6 being about 10% faster than the A380 oh. and the RX 6400 being about 10% faster. Now we should take early results with a grain of salt. Sort of, because the fact that Intel's own reviewer's guide, their own guidance materials seem to suggest that performance is going to be terrible um, would add a lot of credibility to third-party <laughs> testing that indicates performance is going to be terrible. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. However, however, it should be noted that the A380 is supposedly the, the, like, the I3, right? Like, the 3 is the, the, the basic the basic tier oh, part of the ARC range. So okay. it was never going to be competitive with, you know, a RTX 3080 or anything like that. It's still a disappointing first outing. And honestly, I'm a little surprised that Intel is going entry level first, given that the convention for at least the other two players in flagship this launch duopoly is to launch with your flagship and then follow up. Actually, AMD doesn't really have any kind of method. And honestly, NVIDIA missing. launches with a flagship, but then a little bit later on launches another card that's better than it. Yeah, well, they're, they're both kind of all over the place. But yeah. in general, yeah. in general... It's a big boy card. You're trying to set the tone for your new generation by launching your flagship card, taking the performance crown, looking like a big dog. You know, Intel, meanwhile, is like, hey, we have this thing. It's Here's like, the little one. It's kind of not very good, but um, yeah. This is a Go Team Blue. slightly yeah. off topic, but what do you think of the naming scheme? 
like the alchemist battle mage stuff. And, and then I think it's like sick. The numbers afterwards, you like um, it? The numbers are fine if they really meant anything. But as far as I can tell, I, okay, so A is obviously alchemist. Yeah, right? and as they release further series of GPUs, it seems C, fairly D, straightforward. E, F, yeah, they're gonna go through the alphabet. It, yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty clear where they're going with that. Yeah, three. I dig it. Um, what the only thing I don't like about the three is that it kind of bucks the rest of the industry's trend. Okay. Uh, where the the first number is the generation. I see what Intel's doing, where the letter is the generation, and. Honestly, if they maintain this naming scheme, they'll probably have a more clear nomenclature than AMD and NVIDIA, who just kind of seem to... Release that randomly and, like, skip random generations and... Yeah, I mean, they, yeah. they literally have multiple cards. AMD has multiple cards with the same four numbers, right? Like, it's... Yeah. It's... It's... it's, it's AMD... AMD-ness. <laughs> AMD-ness that... AMD used to do a March Madness promo called March AMDness. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was trying to I was trying to figure out how you would pronounce AMDness. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. The point is that I see where they're going with this, but it's a little bit confusing from a consumer perspective when we have an established okay GPU the style. First number is the tier. So now you've got okay, no, no, no. The letter is the tier. And then we've got the 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 the, the next the the next one is sorry the letters that sorry the first number is the generation right so now we've got the letter is the generation and then this next number is what tier of GPU it is and it used to be it is with the other guys that the first number is the generation and the second number is the the performance tier the performance class then it gets a little confusing for me I mean I haven't seen the entire Arc Alchemist lineup um, I don't know that Intel has officially announced uh, Intel Arc alchemist lineup have they officially announced the whole lineup these are apparently leaks a 350 m hold on do we have just like a slide okay here we go i'll share my screen we've got these are these appear to be all oh my goodness go away these appear to be mobile so we've got a 350 m a 370 m so that all kind of makes sense it's alchemist it's three tier and then it's either a 50 or a 70 and then you've got it's pretty typical Potential for these companies, for yeah, to to leave an unused digit yeah. in case they ever want to do, which is fine, you know, a, a, an A three fifty five or something along those lines. But yeah. the funny thing about that, to me anyway, is that more often than not, they're going to end up using a suffix anyway: pro, xt, <laughs> gt, gtx, or both. yeah, or both. <laughs> so you're you're kind of sitting there going, okay, well, you got to pick a lane. <laughs> you got to pick a lane. Which one is it? Yeah. I like the yeah the the numbers part, and I understand what you're saying with like the leaving the conventions for GPUs and stuff. I think there you have a point there. I don't personally really care too much to be honest. I actually really like the lettering, and okay. I and I like the names that go along with the lettering. I think it's cool. Okay. Um, I think a lot of stuff has gotten very serious over the years. Um, like if you look at even just like GPU box art. Oh man! Now compared to back in the day, what Nvidia has done to GPU box art is it should be a, considered a it's crime. A crime, yeah. There, it's all so samey now, it's and so you guys sterile. know why, right? It's because Nvidia forces it. They have to approve the box art from their board partners, so you'll you'll never see like cool box art anymore. At least not in the North American region. There's still some pretty out there like wacky, colorful box art designs in other regions, but they all have to adhere to Nvidia's rules. Yeah, they're just all so boring and sterile. And like, I ugh, I get it, but it's, it's, I think it's kind of nice to just have some fun with it a little bit. Like Alchemist Battle Mage. Like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. I don't know. I'm sure. Down. Why not? And then I, I like, I like that they're just going along the alphabet because, yeah, it's really clear. It's clear within Intel's own stack. I yeah. do, I do understand your point of it deviating from the other ones. I wonder how far in advance they've thought. Did they, did they figure out the entire alphabet, or are they going to be like Google and sort of realize at some point, okay, we're running out of, we're running out of desserts here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what are we going to do? We're okay, okay. New plan, new plan. We invent a dessert, then we name our next Android after. You know what? F it. We're going back to just numbers. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I I feel like Intel would have planned it all out. I feel like that would be an Intel move. I feel like I might have said something like that 
until back when Intel transitioned their Xeon branding to this whole uh, gold, silver, bronze, platinum nonsense that means absolutely uh, nothing with respect to performance or the application that that particular chip is intended for. So no, Luke, I really do not think they thought it out. I had I had this thought like a while ago. It wasn't like, I mean, like a couple weeks ago of like, you know, like we dog on companies for like bad naming schemes all the time. I should make sure that like, I, I, I say good things about the next one that's actually good and then then you bring that up yeah no it's pretty it's, it's, so that was horrible it was pretty rough <laughs> that was a complete failure <laughs> it was pretty rough it was trash i mean should we talk about the core two duo and then the core <laughs> two quad is it two or is it four <laughs> come on guys i mean admittedly that was a while ago now that's yeah it's pretty old but yeah so, anyways it's looking like it's going to be pretty rough. There are still ways that Intel could redeem themselves. If they're super useful outside of gaming, then, hey, maybe that's uh, that's part of the value proposition. If their power consumption also, is extremely low, maybe that's part of the value proposition. We also haven't seen their sick cards. Yeah. Like, if these are competing with, like, 50 series cards... Like the, these aren't a lot of the cards that people would be buying to really push for gaming anyways. So we'll have to see until they, uh, we'll have to see when they bring their big stuff out. And to be fair, I don't think that I could call this like a disappointment because I don't think anyone thought they were going to come out swinging super hard either. I mean, I think a lot of people were hoping, hoping for it. Hoping for it, yeah. Especially fair enough. during the shortage when GPU pricing was just pushing graph, pushing gaming out of reach Yeah. for... I mean, I, a majority of people? PC like... gaming was legitimately out of reach for a lot of people. I, I had communications with a bunch of people over the last couple of years that were like, yeah, I mean, if my computer dies, I'm just done. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, it's for real. It's just too expensive. Uh, another thing that we know about Arc Alchemist is that it's going to support both AV1 decoding and encoding. So mm. it could be the only GPU you can buy today that will still be able to keep up in the in the video transcoding world five, eight, ten years from now we'll when see, AV1 yeah. is prevalent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not now. AV1 is sort of not that, not super, um, <clears throat> not super relevant today. Yeah. But someday, someday we hope. Thanks for watching and thanks to XSplit for sponsoring this week's clips. XSplit is perfect for content creators or businesses, and you can save 10% off with code Linus using the link in the video description.